Hi everyone and welcome along. You've really been enjoying our little vignettes and landscape paintings so today we're going to do another one of those by having a go at a windmill. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right then, so whilst I start mixing up my paints, um, now is a great opportunity for me to tell you about today's sponsor who is the wonderful Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 50 countries. Um, the entire catalogue is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German as well as English um, and it, it's just, uh, I've, I've loved Skillshare for quite a long time and today I want to talk to you particularly about a class that I took recently um, which was Emma Gannon's new class. She's an amazing author and podcaster I already love so I was really really thrilled to see she's got a new Skillshare class called Finding Fulfillment using pivots to power your creative career. Now, I don't know about you, but I experienced the most ultimate pivot um, when the pandemic hit two years ago and we pivoted into becoming YouTubers and of course we all know that that is going really well and we're really enjoying it and loving life as content creators. However, in hindsight now, having recently taken Emma's class oh my goodness it was so inspiring and really really helpful to just fill, fill you with the confidence to take your own steps in pivoting from your own career uh, into something new so I really highly recommend you check that one out and the very very cool thing is the first thousand people to use the link on my description um, in the episode notes below um, or using the code De Winton Paper Co. it's all written out there um, will get one month free of a trial of Skillshare. So head over to the episode notes, click the link and, and be one of the first thousand because I'm sure this will go very quickly. Um, so just if you didn't know, Skillshare is ad free, which is always great. Um, and the new classes are launched every week. So there's always something new to discover. Um, so for, for now, let's celebrate my pivot of two years ago and paint something absolutely lovely. Okay, so we're doing something different in the spirit of our sponsors. So I have done a horizontal line and then created a curve and I can tell you the size of my compass. It was hmm, just shy of eight centimeters to make a circle like that. And so we can put the compass to one side. Um, now, I know that everybody loved painting the lighthouse the other day, so I thought we'd paint something along those lines. We're going to do another little vignette, um, and we're going to do a, a windmill this time. Now, I'm aware that in America, windmills look a bit different, don't they? A bit more industrial. In, in the UK, they're these amazing, really magical... Um, structures that sort of feel like something out of a storybook uh, on along the same lines as a lighthouse really so we're going to do a vertical line and then i'm going to do two tapered lines coming out either the side and then i'm going to do another there and another there just a little bit more angled out and a little closer in and this is going to create an amazing lighthouse shape so i'm just going to move my paints and bits and pieces because I want to get in here. Okay, so creating a sort of domed top with a little twist at the top and the lighthouse, lighthouse at windmill, I keep on telling myself are getting mixed up I'm going to put the propellers in now we're going to make sure they're the same length each so we'll go for the same distance either side did we go for the same distance no we didn't goodness me there we go and then so we do a cross like that and then each windmill blade is going to have a panel coming out from one side. So there we go. This bit doesn't have to be quite so 
measured and accurate and there we go and then at the bottom at the base I'm just going to curve that off a little bit and then straighten it down and that is going to be our little piece but the other thing we're going to have is we're going to have maybe a few little houses and trees in the distance a few little trees in the distance there and we'll have a field of corn and one of my patrons asked me if I would teach them how to draw a rainbow in the sky as well so I thought well let's pop that in too and that'll be really fun okay so um, give your pencil a light rubbing out um, I'm gonna keep it fairly heavy for the sake of filming give it a light rubbing out get your paints and let's go okay so we've got colors for the sky mixed up here and I've got a size six brush on the go now I'm going to color in uh, and just leave a few little clouds and doing that in exactly the same way as we did with the lighthouse so we're just leaving a few unpainted sections could even leave some that just go right out to the side there we're using a very very dilute uh, French ultramarine blue mix with a bit of a little bit of Prussian blue and at this point to paint a rainbow in the sky we want to make sure that the page is a tiny bit wet but not so wet that the color is going to bleed all over the place so I'm just sort of playing for time a little bit just chatting to you um, but I've also got my colors mixed up now the colors of the rainbow are red orange green oh no sorry red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet I don't think we're going to spot them all from a distance in this rainbow so I'm going to and I'm also I think I'm just going to put like quite a little rainbow in just like that it's just sort of in the distance if you wanted you could always get your compass and draw another another line like this so sort of get from the same point and maybe just just to give you a very very faint sense of where you want to be you can barely see it but that's kind of what we want and I'm just going to try painting in red first with a size two tenths brush pretty pleased with that actually because we don't want it too strong could say that was a little, maybe a little bit strong so I'll just take a little bit of that color away so that's pretty good now I'll take the orange and I'm going to just try and do this in as few brush strokes as possible keep your brush nice and vertical for painting this rainbow painting this curve you see I've got the my hand holding the brush like that that just allows it to be nice and controlled okay so the yellow is a little bit a little bit fainter I'm actually quite pleased with this um, I thought this would be potentially well potentially disastrous but you know you've got to be brave and try new things haven't you and also I think it's probably helpful for you to know that I'm feeling just as apprehensive aha this is what I want I want just a tiny bit of a blend I'm 
Then we'll go for well, blue. I went for cobalt blue deep. I felt like that was the most rainbowy blue this time. Just keeping it really nice and dilute. Okay, and I'm just going to go for a, a violet to finish off. And we'll just soften the edge of that fraction. And I think that is not bad at all for a, for a rainbow that wants to feel a little bit realistic in this sky um, and just in the piece as a whole. I think that's really fun. Okay, so now we're going to look at the, the ground. Um, my windmill is going to be in a nice field of wheat. So I'm going to get yellow ochre and just have it quite nice and dilute, especially going off into the distance there. I've got a size two brush here. Feels like a really good size for control as well as coverage. <laughs> I uh, had a comment from one person last time when I did the lighthouse when I managed to get something outside the lines and they said it wasn't very good for for the they were rather distracted so I promised I would there we go that's the thing if you do find yourself painting outside the lines either you could mask off the the flat section along the bottom with some masking tape but also you can mask off around the edge using masking fluid which um, we have done some of in past paintings so do not fret if that's the kind of thing you uh, get a bit distracted by. Okay, round the edges. So we'll just fill this in and uh, then we'll start doing some detail. Right, I'm going to mix together some shadow mix, which is going to help us create our detail for the texture of the windmill. I'm going to do sort of planks. So I'm just going to tilt the page a bit so I can get in there with a bit of fluff on my brush or on my page. So I've got a two tenths brush and what I'm going to do for a start is I'm not going to worry about the actual windmill um, fan, the, the, what is that, the propellers? the moment because I'm painting in quite a translucent colour so I'm just having the brush angled quite low and those little bits of unpainted space are creating nice little plank details for me. Sort of want some of them to bleed into one another and some not to. And then what I'm just going to do is just take a little bit of Payne's Grey down the side there. Just let that bleed into the planks for a little bit more interest. So you can see it will have sort of seeps in quite nicely at the bottom um, and took a little bit more time to do it at the top just because that's how paint dries. Okay, so we'll go back up to the top.
and just tease it out a little bit. Okay, that creates a really nice effect. And then just on the sides, we're going to do it again, but we just need to make sure that the angle, you see we sort of angle it a little bit there. It just sort of tapers away from us. It is much easier, by the way, to start from the top and, and work your way downwards because the brush is angled so low. But I just wanted to show you. And I'm going to pop a little bit of shadow on the outside there. And just tease it in again. Okay, so I'm just going to do that on that side and then we'll move on to the next bit. We're going to do another bit of clever painting using negative space. Um, to create the panels in the dome at the top. So started with the fine tip of the brush with yellow ochre and then worked my way down. So here we go. Just creating little bits of negative space. Probably get a bit crowded at the top. I'm going to give us a little bit more at the top. And then a little bit of shadow. And that's just going to bleed into each shape there. Last one's always a bit tricky to get completely on its own. There we go. And then towards the top, I'm going to use a bit more of the stronger colour and just draw it upwards and place a little little cap on top And it's looking really cool. So all of these things obviously are going to have the windmill propellers over the top, but we just need to let them dry 100%. Um, so down here, we'll just add in some slightly sort of shadowy bits. And also people do live in windmills um, or they work in them whether they're working or living in ones. Um, we need some windows, don't we? So, I'll get my really little brush. And we're just going to paint in four little sort of window pane shapes. You can see they're slightly on an angle following that shape of the windmill itself. I'm just placing these in by eye. And that's pretty fun. So we'll just let this dry and get the fans in. 
Um, for any of you who've been getting very frustrated with me not getting the names of things right, um, I've just looked it up and um, they're called turbine blades on a windmill, on a windmill turbine. Anyway, so I um, just thought whilst I'm waiting for those to dry, I can actually put in a few of these little trees on the horizon. So I've just got some sap green mixed in with some French ultramarine blue. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blend those down into the landscape. And then I'm going to just take some of that shadow and just use it to kind of slightly mute the colour in the distance. Might be the shadow from the, the clouds in the sky. Kind of love it when you see clouds just, sh the shadow of clouds over fields is really cool. Um, okay, so we'll get a bit more that green there. We're all just we're just waiting for our windmill to dry. Okay, we're just going to let that dry, and we'll be on for the next step. Okay, right. I'm going to paint mine with a bit of Mars black in my burnt sienna. I've got my two tenths brush and what I'm going to do, I might even want a smaller brush. Yeah, it's just personal preference. I like the short bristles of the four tenths brush. Okay, so. I'm going to begin with this sort of thicker line. I'm just adding a little bit more Mars Black in there. So that's quite fun. So you start with your what you think is a, a dark mix. And I'm sort of doing these two parallel lines. And then just adding a bit of a low light. Now I think these turbine blades can can have different appearances. The reference image I've been working from actually has them as a sort of grid. So I'm going to draw the outline. And then I'm going to draw these crisscross lines. And I'm just eyeballing it so This is not the kind of thing you'd want to bother drawing in first. You want to try just going for it, not being scared. And that's pretty good, pretty pleased with that. So that's why we can paint things in beforehand underneath, because we actually want to see them. So we'll try again. I'm going to try and match up what I did, so I did one, two, three lines inside. So one, two, three, inside. I'm not going to try and get the exact same number there, but it looks pretty good. Okay, so we're just going to fill those in. 
And now we've got those in, we can pop in just little bits of detail. So there's a few sort of lines there. All in the shadowy mix. And then I think what would be nice is a bit more texture in the field. Just in the foreground really. So I'm just using a slightly more concentrated yellow ochre than used when doing the wash. Just dabbing with my size two tenths brush and then just getting a little bit bigger with those brush strokes. We'll fill that in and then the last thing we'll do is add a bit of shadow. So last thing to do is some shadow. So here's Payne's Grey. Get it nice and sort of dilute and then I've got to sort of choose where the light's coming from. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm sure someone very clever is going to tell me because I've got a rainbow in this that there's a very clear sense of where the light's coming from um, but we've got it going like that and there would be a little bit of shadow there it's a little bit into the field and there we go so don't forget the Skillshare offer is there for the first thousand of you who click the link in the episode notes below using the code DeWintonPaperCo. And I really hope you enjoy trying something a little bit different with this tutorial, just as we can do with Skillshare. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our sponsor Skillshare today and of course to my patrons for your support uh, for this video and every video it helps us keep creating. And of course if you enjoyed that one then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with it and if you never want to miss another video just hit the subscribe button and we'll see you again next time. Bye!